So welcome, welcome to you and welcome to everyone uh, to the first Blockchain at UBC monthly research talk of 2021. Um, so here we are starting off a brand new year and so far so great. Um, lots of exciting things. Uh, we have um, our new micro-credential in uh, blockchain technology being led by Dr. Chris Rowell um, through extended learning. And there's an information session coming up on that on January 27th. So um, for those of you who uh, maybe want to uh, take a little bit more in-depth look at blockchain, don't have time to go back to grad school, then uh, we, we have an offering for you. Um, our uh, Dr. Uh, Chen Feng has been featured on the front page of the UBC um, UBC uh, webpage today. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And um, so many great things about which we will say more in our upcoming newsletter. But without delay, since we're a little bit late getting started, I'd really like to welcome Dr. Shumo Chu with us today. Thank you for being here and turn it over to my great colleague, David Wang, to do the formal introduction. So over to you, David. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so today we have Dr. Shuma Chu and with us for the monthly research talk. Um, Dr. Chu is an assistant professor at the University of uh, California at uh, Santa Barbara. He obtained uh, his PhD from the University of uh, Washington in uh, Seattle. And then uh, he was also a research scientist uh, at uh, the uh, Operand. Um, he currently research uh, interests uh, uh, on the privacy preserving systems. Um, so it's quite aligned with um, uh, many of the professors researching in UBC. He has been uh, working on database system, former methods, and then large scale graph analysis. Uh, he also has uh, many papers published in the uh, SIG KDD. Um, so uh, very glad to have you here, uh, Dr. Chu. Uh, great, it's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, so um, so me and uh, uh, Zehua went to the same uh, undergrad, and uh, I think uh, I did. I still remember I did the same uh, internship with Zehua, like uh, you know, pretty yeah, uh, yeah you know, you know, pretty sketchy place in Wuhan. So <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. Uh, so Fun. yeah, so I think uh, one thing I want to uh, know, I think. Uh, uh, before the presentation is that uh, so most people are from uh, uh, let me start my video as well so most so most so what what do you guys want to interested to hear like most people are from uh, more like a te technical background right yeah, yeah I think I that um yeah we're so, so in the technical aspect. yeah let me know because uh, <laughs> like we have like a also please interrupt me anytime if you want so i just want to know a little bit about to the audience first uh so are, are you guys like a professors, PhD student, or? We're, we're very mixed bag, actually, um, Shimo. We, uh -huh. uh, we have, usually we have professors, um, and professors come from multiple disciplines. But I would say today we're probably represented by more technical uh, faculty, postdocs, students from, we're a multidisciplinary research um, uh, cluster. So, uh, you know, I think just uh, if you want to talk about your research from a technical perspective, because you come from a tech, more technical discipline, that's great. And, and uh, we'll just leave it to the participants to ask you questions, which can, you know, can be of a more technical nature or they, they might be, um, uh, you know, more general. Uh, we do record the session as well, I'll say, and, and often people listening back to the recording will come from various disciplines. So you know, if you can kind of connect, to, to strike a nice balance between uh, like the technical components, but also like connecting your technical research to broader societal issues, that would probably be helpful for our listeners. Does that sound great. like a, a reasonable expectation? <laughs> great, 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 great. Yeah, let me, let me, let me try my best. Yeah, so, uh, so I think uh, uh, I don't have a, like a super formal slide, so I will just be uh, talking. I hope I can okay. do that. Uh, All right. So, sure. so uh, like uh, uh, this is the same thing uh, as I, I'm doing a startup with a few few folks in uh, Harvard and MIT. So, mm -hmm. um, so we do have a, like a very comprehensive like uh, what we do in terms of but the technology side. Uh, I don't. Yeah, we, we were quite busy building the product yet, so we don't have a, like a super formal technical slides yet. 
So, but uh, like, like we'll have a paper. So I think here is what I'm going to do. I'll yeah. go through the uh, kind of like a, why we want to do this and uh, the kind of the motivation slide first. Mm -hmm. And then I will, uh, I will then talk, dive, dive into the technical details, but uh, because, uh, uh, forgive me because the technical said I don't have a slide yet. So uh, I can open paper and uh, then try to talk from the papers, but uh, please uh, ask me any questions if you want. Sure, that sounds great. And if you've got a link to your your paper, um, then we can we can follow along to the, with that. And yeah. yes, yes. Let me actually also send you a link of the paper. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me just send it through the chat. Sure. Yeah. Got it. Great. Super. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, like again, please inter interrupt me anytime if you want. I actually want to uh, like uh, exchange ideas with you guys so that uh, the, the the talk won't be so boring. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um. So let me. Uh, so can you guys see the slides? Yeah, we can. So uh, today I'm oh, going to show you. They're not the, in presentation uh, mode. In case you wanted to put them in presentation mode, we're seeing right. kind of just Great. regular mode. Is this, is this better? Yeah, that's better. So so today I'm going to present you the uh, Menta network, the first uh, pri pri privacy preserving DeFi stack powered by zk Snark. So first, uh, I think uh, uh, everyone agrees that uh, uh, I think right now, like a decentralized exchange next. Uh, privacy, anti-surveillance, uh, interoperability, and uh, um, and uh, also like uh, uh, another thing is anonymous cryptocurrency snacks uh, price that stability. So, uh, so so I mean because this is a technical author, so I think uh, mm, I hope I've, uh, like uh, so do, so you know in, in blockchain there is this concept called uh, uh, pseudo anonymity, pseudo anonymity, right? Uh, so yeah, hard to uh, so, <laughs> isn't it <laughs> so in a sense that uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a so weird thing in, in some sense right so like it's anonymous in the sense that uh, hey you only have like a, a cryptographic uh, public addresses however like it's uh, every everything happens will be on chain and what makes things worse is that uh, what what happens on chain will last there forever so so this is so i, I know like a, a lot of like a privacy, very privacy concerns folks, they are actually very worried about that. Because like, who knows, like, a, like, a, even in like a 10,000 years later, probably people still can see your transactions on chain. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's actually, so for, for, for some people who actually understand the technical point of view, it's actually a privacy concern. Right. So, uh, so, 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 so that's, so that's, um, and also, um, uh, anti surveillance uh, so I'm, I'm i'm going to talk about audibility a little bit later so so i think uh, so i think in our view there is a way to do uh, to do like anti surveillance uh, but give, basically give the user a choice and they, they still could be like a, a compliant to the regulation okay so also inter interoperability right so i think interoperability uh, so uh, uh, so interoperability is a, indeed a problem for a lot of uh, like uh, for a lot of decentralized exchange problems, so uh, so that's why you can see right nowadays most of this kind of project built on Ethereum are like a, uh, basically using the ERC twenty tokens, and our project is actually building on Polkadot. And uh, later I'll I'll show you like what what what, what we want to do that. The, the last thing is a price stability, right? So so you might say like why we want to do this project, why this project should exist. And there is already Zcash, which is very strong and powered by like a lot of uh, world-class uh, cryptographers. Uh, but uh, however, I think the, the Zcash, uh, I, I, as I will show you later, the major problem here is that uh, Zcash is a standalone cryptocurrency. And if you look at the most used cases right now, right, a lot of people are using stable coins. A lot of people use wrapped BTCs, right? So this, in, in that sense, that uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, people want to use their own token and and. So basically, we, we basically build a privacy layer for them so that uh, if they want, they can use use uh, private transactions. OK, so that's sort of the, the one line overview. So uh, so basically, we, we use Polkadot so that uh, the interoperable, we based on the Polkadot parachain architecture uh, to, to, to make it interoperable to the parachain asset. 
and uh, we're, we're using like a ZK snarks for like a verifiable computation without leaking information so that uh, uh, allow senders to pro to prove their transactions uh, legit like a legitimacy and a validity without disclosing the identity informations. So, uh, so before I dive into details, how many of you know zk snark? I would say that I'm vaguely familiar with it. It's not a it's not a an approach that I know a lot so maybe spend some time on it i think that would be helpful right right sorry i don't have a slide for that again so okay. uh, so let me actually try to see uh let me try to see like a uh it's challenging for, for myself whether can i explain the case marking if i'm in, in like a two minutes uh so so i'll, I'll actually create a uh like a uh whiteboard right so so, so zk snark is a so-called verifiable computation, right? So the, the whole idea is that uh, uh, it's so also it's very general. So the whole idea is that uh, suppose you have a function, let's say f, and what is f? F can be any MP statement. So as a computer science, we all know that MP statements is almost like, I mean, there are some quirks in the performance, but MP statements, it can be, can be anything, right? It can be any computation you want to express, right? So then let's say um, you want to, so you want to show something. Let's say F, X is input and the output is Y, right? So, the cool part of the verifiable comp the, the whole business of the verifiable computation is that uh, uh, you can show people that fx equal to y without leaking both x and y. So in the sense that, uh, uh, so, so here is the con concretely what do you do, right? So you put, in, put this uh, MP statement into a circuit, uh, let's say C, right? So now you generate this uh, prover and verifier game. So basically you, you, you first do a setup and uh, you use a C, right? So you generate a thing called a CRS, which is a kind of like a common reference string. Uh, so uh, if you guys are familiar with the crypto, it's actually using some like a, uh, so, 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 so it used to be an interactive protocol, but now they actually uh, change the interactive they use a diffie hellman transformation to change the interactive protocol to a uh, to a non-interactive protocol, right? So, so but, the, but that's minor details. You, you guys don't have to worry about that. So basically, you give a computation, it generates a CRS. And now it actually get a prover and verifier game. So, so the prover takes the circuit and it takes the input. So generate a proof, let's say pi. And uh, uh, of course, uh, need to show some, for example, like a, a, a need to have uh, have some public information, for example, wise commitment. So because it's, uh, so this is a commitment and wise commitment is public. So, so because this is, again, because this is a wise commitment, think of this as like a hash of Y. Right, so it actually won't leak any information of Y. And then there is a verifier. So for this verifier, it takes pi. Uh, so so to, to actually to ensure the entire, uh, the same X, you get X commitment as well, as well as this is the public information. So it takes pi, it takes x commitment and y's commitment. And I say yes or no. And also the, uh, the, the function itself is public, right? So basically it can tell, can tell you whether this fx indeed is y or not, right? So this is very, very powerful. And this, uh, this scheme is first used by the cryptocurrency called Zcash. 
to to get a, like a fully anonymous cryptocurrency, right? So this is Here also this quick question yes. for you. So yes. I'm looking at the crypto library that uses. Um, I guess, interactive uh, zero knowledge proofs. So you mentioned that um, ZK SNARKs are non-interactive zero knowledge proofs. So what's the advantage of non-interactive over interactive? Just, I don't know if you could explain that just quickly. Right, right. So, so think of the blockchain use case, right? So mm -hmm. for the interactive, you, you really need to play the prover and the verifier game for multiple round. There are multiple rounds of communication, which is not very practical actually, because uh, for example, if you think of you send a, Send, think of if you send a transaction, uh, then it, the receive, then the, the blockchain system get back you to a random challenge and you fulfill the challenge and send it back. This is multiple route. Mm -hmm. And what makes makes more is that uh, because this this thing is need to be verified by the by the consensus by the it's 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 basically impossible to have like a multi round consensus. You ask the consensus validators to. To, to play this game and to do multiple runs because it's totally asynchronous, right? So, mm -hmm. so let's say, let's say if you have a consensus, there's no, there's no, this no. So then you, you, if you want to validate a proof, like a, let's say, let's say, let's use red as a client, right? So it's the client. If you validate, validate a proof, every consensus node need to validate the proof. Then you need to put this, put this validator and the, uh, uh, this prover and valid, valid, uh, verifier game to every node, and this is all. This is almost impossible to construct a blockchain system on top of that. Mm, right. So right. Right. Now, so yeah, yeah. So, so that's a very good, great question, right? So now you have a zk proof, right? So you have this pi. So what do you do is you just submit the pi to the blockchain, and now every node is verifying the. Every node is, can. can do you, Actually, uh, you actually put the pi into the blockchain so that every uh, validator is validating the proof, right? So, so like a non-interactive proof is non-interactive property is actually very very crucial here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 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 and also it's a, uh, also it's known trick in crypto that uh, you just use a, like a Diffie Hellman a kind of like Diffie Hellman transformation mm -hmm. uh, or it, some people call it Diffie Hellman heuristic. Let me talk a little bit more about Diffie Hellman, right? So so it's basically Think of think of a random think of a, a this this game like whenever because in each round you need to generate some like a random uh, challenges so that uh, making sure the verifier doesn't doesn't cheat. However, there is a clever so basically the the, the, the whole trick of Diffie Hellman is there is a clever way of embed this kind of randomness into the CRS so that no one can cheat because the CRS need to be generated both by verifier and the verified provers. And there is a way to deriving the CRS, both deriving randomness from the CRS so that like know the, like both of like a, the prover and the, both the prover and the, uh, sorry, the verifier can never cheat. So, 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 so that's, that's like a sort of like a high level, uh, like a high level idea of a Diffie Hellman transformation. Okay. Right. So, so ho hopefully that, that will help, right? So yeah. yeah. then, so then this, so this, this, is, this, is, this is very, very powerful. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, a lot of a uh, uh, lot of cryptocurrency companies and a lot of universities de develop a, uh, like a, uh, like a Z uh, powerful ZK snark system. So I will at least a few, right? So there is a Zaxi. Uh, so, uh, so this is a, uh, and I think now they renamed their, 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 their uh, to Arcs, ArcWorks. So this is a, this is from UC Berkeley, and there's another popular zk snark library is from Zcash called Halo. So, so the, I mean, the, the, some something varies. Some of them don't need to generate CRS, but the performance will be worse. So, so I mean, let me talk a few things more about zk snark and why it's useful. So another useful thing about zk snark is that, although the proving could be sometimes costly. At least in the state of art, uh, the, the verification is very efficient. So, how you may you may ask, uh, how efficient, right? So, uh, it's constant. That's that's really amazing, right? So, uh, the verification is constant cost, and also the verification is roughly about five milliseconds, no matter how big your computation is. So, usually the bigger the computation is, uh, the more proving time you get. Like, however, the verification is very, very efficient. So that's a, 
so that's that's a powerful thing of uh, VK snark. So think of uh, uh, so think of uh, like a uh, each transaction you your 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 blockchain system only have like a five millisecond budget could have a, like a five millisecond budget to verify VK snark, right? So additionally, um, you uh, in, in a few other projects they do pro so called proof aggregation. So for example, there is also, I mean, people use ZK Snark in creative ways. There are like other blockchain projects that are using ZK Snark. Uh, so it's not used to for privacy, but used to accelerate, to actually uh, reduce the cost of Ethereum gas cost. So they call, call it a ZK rollup. So, so the idea is that so the batch multiple transactions into the, uh, into the same batch and the generator ZK proof for the batch of the transactions so that, uh, uh, this is like a 1,000 transactions only need to be verified once. And this is, of course, this is a layer two solution. This is out of scope of this talk. I'm just saying like a, there are many powerful ways of using ZK snarks, not only for privacy. Okay, so so that's a, that a, that's a ZK snark. And uh, um, so because this because this is technical audience, uh, I will just jump into I'll skip the the, the platform overview first. First, tell you the uh, the first first tell you the, the how, how how like a, I mean this is a very high level again this is a very high level uh, description but I first tell you how to how to do the how to do the exchange right so so first so our private coin protocol so basically um, uh, yeah so first any questions Oh, sorry. I, I um, why don't you carry on and we'll we'll try and hold back questions for a minute because right. we want you to be able to have enough time to get all the way through and tell right, us right, right, about right. what you're doing. So yeah. Right, right, great, great. Let me. Use I have lots there. of questions, but <laughs> yeah. So, so let me show you a, a little. Yeah, forget about the marketing pitch. So uh, let me show you a, a like a the, the structure of this thing, right? So essentially. Uh, uh, first, uh, mm, what I didn't show here is that uh, the, there is a base, there is a construction of the base coin. So the base coin is a dig digitalized, de decentralized anonymous payments payment scheme. Uh, so this is really similar to Zcash. The difference is that uh, we can use any like a pocket of the parachain asset as a, as a base token. So that, uh, for example, you have a dot, and you have a Kala, you have some like a stable coin. You can use that to um, uh, you can use that as a base token. Right. So, and secondly, the, for the uh, then so the, the major innovation part we do is for the decentralized exchange part. Right. So, uh, so uh, so for first a uh, little bit of background. So, how many of you know the uh, automatic market maker mechanism, like uh, uh, AMM? Uh, so, so anyone knows the AMM? It's not sounding familiar to me, but yeah. 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 Cool. So, 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 so let me actually, uh, so because that's, that's also needed, let me actually first explain that first. Um, so yeah, sorry about, I do read, like, uh, I, I, like we're pretty busy, so don't have a uh, time to develop the slides. So hopefully, uh, uh, like we can still get uh, what we want. Uh, so, so AMM is, a uh, uh, so, so MM is actually an idea from a uh, Vitanica bulletin. So, so he, so it's, it's a, it's a really elegant idea. And uh, this is used by like all of the DeFi project right now. For example, Sushi, uh, like a, a Uniswap, all these DeFi project. So, so you, you might say, what is AMM? Like automated market maker. So before, like, before let's talk about AMM, let's, let's first talk about exchange, right? So how does the exchange work? So exchange basically, the, the traditional exchange has a, a thing called order book, right? So, so they have two, order book has two parts. One, one, order, one order book is, uh, um, one, one part is uh, like the, the buy order, one, one, order, one part is the sale, sale order. And according to the volume and the price, so you can think of uh, like a, uh, the, 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 the other book has like a buy, buy side and has sale side, right? And what, what does exchange do? Exchange actually matched orders. So basically exchange matched match the orders according to some like a mechanism and match the order from the buy side to sell side. So that's uh, once the match order done, like, like your, your, your transaction goes through, right? So, so that's, that's the order book. But order book you can see it's very, very complicated. 
And if you implement other booking, let's say Ethereum, it will burn you a lot of gas. So it's not very practical yet. So then people, then people did discover a clever way of uh, doing exchange called AMM, right? So AMM is, uh, so the, let me first tell you the most primitive AMM called X, uh, X times Y equals K. So let me see here, X equals Y equals K, right? So think of the, um, so think of the, think of the when you, uh, when you do some exchange, there is a supply and a demand curve, right? So let me actually still use the yellow one. So, so the high, the entire idea of AMM is that uh, uh, it, uh, so it's a smart contract that uh, is, you can think of the pool. So this X is, X is kind of a coin. So X is a coin. And Y is a kind of coin. So let's say uh, X is a BTC. Uh, I mean, this should be a ERC20 token, but it should really be BTC. And Y is Ethereum, right? Then how do you do exchange? Here, you initialize a pool and making sure that uh, the volume, uh, BTC's, vo BTC's uh, uh, amount called X and the Ethereum amount called Y, X, Y equals to a fixed number. This is the invariant, right? So, so think of, and uh, if you kind of like a familiar, uh, like a, with a, 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 like a, the curves, so this is a, a, this is a curve like that, right? So at each, at each static point, you are at one curve, right? So any, because like any point, any point in the curve, that uh, actually fulfills this invariant. Let's call it x1, y1, right? So now let's say a trader comes. <laughs> a trader want to exchange, um, like uh, this is current. Uh, this is the current invariant and maintained by the consensus. And the trader comes. A trader want to let's say anyone want to exchange a token. Um, so let's say you want to exchange some uh, uh, BTC. Uh, you want to give some BTC and get back some Ethereum. So let's say you want to give um, uh, like the, uh, uh, give, give the K, K BTC, right? So then you can see, right? After he gives the K BTC, put the K BTC to the, uh, let's say here is X, here is Y. Uh, sorry, it's confusing. Let me actually use the same eraser. Um, so here is X, here is Y, right? So let's say this is a trader want to give a, a like a KBTC, right? Then the, then the, then the price moves, right? So then the price actually moves to um, X one plus K, right? And of course you can calculate by yourself, right? So what is the, what's the new y, y1 here, right? So, so this new y1 basically is x, uh, and a smart contract basically ensure that uh, he gets the delta of the y. So for example, in this case, he gets some, uh, so basically this, this, this curve actually capture kind of like, like the supply demand the really cool thing is that uh, now you only need to prove to the smart contract that uh, this uh, uh, this thing uh, this invariant hold after after you do the trade, and there is no other book at all. You don't don't need to have a, have an order book at all. And uh, I mean, there are more complicated variants. For example, there are some change of the curves. Uh, so, for example, there is a very uh, popular DeFi project right now called Curve, right? So this is just like a user curve. Use, use, use a better curve to that so that uh, you have more price stability from an econ, econ, economic point of view. But really, right, so this is, a, this is a cool idea, right? The beauty of this thing is that it's very, very simple to implement. So, and in the essence, what do we do? So basically we develop a cryptographic sound, uh, let me actually, uh, so, so, any, so first, any problems of the, any questions about the AMM part? I want to move, move on to, to the next part. 
we'll, we'll come back. I, I'm making note great, of questions great. I have, yeah, so we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll great, hopefully great. have questions at the end for you. Great, great. So, so then, like, how can you make the how can you make the decentralized exchange uh, 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 private, right? So, I mean, the the protocol is actually pretty complicated because there are like a lot of uh, design considerations. However, the basic idea is simple, right? So let's say you have a let's say in the ledger system you have a base coin ledger, ledger A, ledger B, right? So whenever you submit a transaction, uh, you actually don't have to include a lot of things. Uh, for example, your identity, your address. Um, you want to, what you want to have is a zero knowledge proof. And the ledger will validate that. And also you can see that, uh, mm, you can see that in our, um, let me see, okay, pink color red. So in our Z ZK proof, the, there is a ledger invariant, uh, which looks fer very familiar, right? This is really the ledger invariant of the uh, AIMM, right? Like automated market maker, All right? So basically this, uh, as long as you, uh, like from like a very high point of, high level point of view, as long as you maintain the zero, not, as long as you maintain the uh, ledger invariant uh, uh, and approved by the zk zk proof zk snark proof, and uh, uh, this this entire like a decentralized exchange system can can uh, can move on, right? So that so that's a um, so so that's a very high level idea, and of course there's like many details. I'm happy to uh, like I'm happy to dive into the details if you guys want. So so so, uh, so sorry, I think I just quit. So then let's talk about how to how to use a uh, how to use this how to use this uh, uh, this project, All right? So it's still still under development, but uh, here is the same, right? So um, so let's say you have a uh, you have a wallet, right? So you have a wallet. You have some base tokens that uh, 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 pocket dot asset, for example, pocket dot uh, like a uh, like a wrapper BTC or some stable coin. So it's very easy. So first, you, you you just just click one button in your wallet, and this uh, it will generate a private address. And uh, this so this uh, uh, you, like your crypto uh, your cryptocurrency will, will will become private. And of course, so so first you actually can use a, this this private variable currency to send them to send the money, right? So you can send this privacy currency to others, and just uh, others will receive that using their own wallet. Additionally, right? So you can also do the swap using the AMM scheme that uh, we, we we mentioned before that uh, to have in this private swap. So, so that's a very high level. So basically, there is a uh, the, the difference is that uh, there is a process called mint, right? Basically, you let's say you have your own cryptographic wallet, right? Then you do the do the token mint, and you mint that tokens, and then. Um, uh, you can use that tokens to do exchange or payment or whatever. Um, so, so that's a that's from like a kind of like a the, how to use this uh, how to use this thing. And of course, in the future, uh, so we are going to develop a privacy preserving smart contract in our platform. Uh, in the sense that uh, uh, you can uh, you can use use like a general pro program language. It probably was something similar to Solidity to to write a privacy preserving contract uh, uh, here, right? So, 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 so that's, a, that's a platform overview. So you might say, so, um, so then let's talk about uh, uh, regulation and uh, audibility a little bit, right? So you, you might say, hey, like is this, uh, like a, that, that, that seems like a perfect thing for people, for people who do like a money monitoring and do all the bad thing, right? So, so, so again, I think first, uh, I think privacy is are like a really like a human, like a like a human, like a fundamental human right, in the sense that uh, like let's say if if you're using cash today, right? So like, it's fine, right? So there there's like a like a cash actually this is so so this is analogous to cash, right? So secondly, I think there is a uh, we are developing some like a new techniques so that to make this private yet still audible. So in the sense that uh, let's say if some uh, like uh, some regulation 
let's say want uh, to audit uh, your transactions. So you can, so what do you do? You act, again, you can also use ZK proof. So basically the, the, audit, the audit agency asks you like what question you want to ask? And then there is a way you can generate ZK proof to, for them to validate that, right? So, so, so basically we don't think the privacy and a lot of uh, uh, like, uh, 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 we don't think uh, privacy and the regulation is, uh, uh, is, is exactly the opposite. I think the regulation is for the, the, the I think their purpose is good, right? So I think there, uh, we should develop like technologies that, so that uh, we keep both privacy and regulation. Uh, but of course, this, this, this need to kind of like a future work with the regulation side, okay? So, so that's, uh, um, so that's, uh, so basically that's a, a, a that's a, that's an overview of the project. Uh, again, sorry for like, a, like, a, a, like, I really don't have uh, too, too much time to, to, to making a, like a dedicated slide, but I hope still, um, so, so I'm happy to take any questions from here. That's, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Shumo. It's, uh, it's great to have a, a look and we appreciate that you're, You've taken time uh, at obviously a really busy time for you. And it's a super interesting project that is dealing with a lot of the questions that, you know, <clears throat> uh, we and, and so many uh, blockchain researchers have been grappling with. And, and I think you really, um, uh, I, re I think you really capture, you know, the challenge before us, you know, when we created a distributed ledger uh, and captured all transactions on a ledger, which we did, you know, you know, as part of solving the double spend um, problem on blockchains, we created a privacy problem. So how do you, right, right. how do you address that, uh, that, you know, seeming tension there? Um, so while people are thinking about questions that they would like to either post to the chat or the Q and A, um, I, I'd like to ask you, uh, a couple of things, and, and I thank you for your really great explanations of ZK Snarks and and also the automatic money maker. Um, and one one immediate question I had, you know, just coming back to the regulation and aud auditability, which of course is supported by being able to see the transactions on the ledger, which is problematic for privacy. And you mentioned like you're working on techniques that would leverage the ZK. Snarks um, of the particular variety, the non-interactive variety, but I'm wondering, like, how's that going to work in practice um, from the standpoint of, like, if I'm a hacker or somebody who's, you know, money laundering or whatever, um, and if the if the solution relies on my, like, you know, sending a, a proof of of something, um, you know, in a response, like, am I going to do that, right? So. Um, so, so how does this ability to uh, identify and audit and meet some regulatory requirements, how does that work when the party um, of a, one party of the two-sided transaction is not cooperative? <laughs> they just don't want to be involved. Right. That's like, <laughs> you know? so, so, right, that's a good, that, that's a really good question. I think uh, uh, this is really the, this is more like a governance question and uh, rather than like uh, this is more like a governance question rather than a technical question. So I think uh, basically both there are few solutions. So for example, right? So like one solution is that uh, uh, there is a way to divide, develop a mechanism so that uh, uh, let's say if you have a court, uh, uh, if you have a court uh, like a like a court notice something like that, and then the, all the there's so so basically uh, all the validators agree. That uh, uh, so so basically we have a selectively disclosure of this uh, this thing so that uh, the if all the all, all the ledgers uh, all the like the consensus agree that uh, and there is a court case so that uh, then this is going to be uh, be be released right no matter whether you consent or not so that's a so that's one that's that's one design case I really think that's an optim, optim, optimal design case so mm -hmm. the other so basically this basically there are only two design Two, two design decisions you can make. The second design decision is that uh, uh, you give the uh, give the uh, kind of like a, the, the 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 government entity this kind of like a, a super super admin, and they can they can see whatever transactions they want. That is that is actually creating problems, creating mm -hmm. other problems, right? So people people say like, and I mean. 
uh, then like the, the, the other question is like, should this be traceable? Like also like uh, should be, uh, if, if they can do anything like uh, then like, would, would they abuse the power? It's, it's hard to say, right? So I think, uh, I think entirely this thing is a moving target. I, yeah. I, think, uh, I think we need more uh, basic conversations and uh, like more yeah. research, both from the like, like, like we are doing cryptographic and the system research, right? So we're not in the position to have a have argument, but uh, I think uh, there need to be more kind of uh, uh, interaction between the between the regulation and the practitioners to 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 see how how, how this can move forward. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you, and and I hope that you know you'll we're having um this summer blockchain technology symposium where we bring academics and policymakers and industry together to have those kinds of conversations and you know love to invite you now to come back to that i just yeah, say that would be great that would be great yeah so so yeah. i think uh, yeah so so you know um so the so one of the i think uh i i hope the the the, the, the i hope the uh like regulators have more like a pro progressive view right so in the sense that uh, uh so so they can talk to the practitioners I think uh, the, uh, in the protein space, a lot of practitioners actually want to work with them. So, but uh, uh, the, the thing is they want to, they need to understand the technical issues. So, so it's not, uh, so for example, they can propose something uh, like uh, sounds really good uh, in, in theory, but uh, it could never work in practice, right? So, yeah, so, so that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, or it's not scalable or, you know, there's, there's so many things. So this, this is why the dialogue, um, but uh, we, we've been working on a similar problem to that. And I'm, I'm going to say, I'll send you a paper great, um, great. that we've just written and, you know, like, see what you think about it. Um, like maybe it, it is an, it, it's not built, you know, obviously with the same exact protocols as, um, as you've used, but it could be, you know, something that could potentially translate. Um, but I don't want to dominate the questions. I've got lots of questions. I'm just wondering if anybody else has questions they'd like to ask to Shimo. Otherwise, I'll keep asking my questions. <laughs> okay, here's one from Chen. Um, I'll read it out because, or you can read it, Shimo, because um, it's the way that this is set up. People can't necessarily uh, speak. So, right, right, right. So, uh, Chen uh, says, yeah, no great question. So, first, yeah. uh, Right. What is the important problem DeFi is trying to solve? I think the most important problem like, like a DeFi trying to solve is like a really by its name, right? Decentralized finance is that uh, they want to have like a kind of like a free market so that uh, uh, like no, no, big, no big banks are too, too, too big to fail. I think that's a kind of like, that's kind of like a philosophy. And from the practical point of view, right? So I think the DeFi trying to solve is that uh, uh, if you have, uh, so a lot of people don't, don't really, I mean, a lot of users hate the, uh, like, uh, because the, the, crypt, the crypto, uh, the cryptocurrency is highly volatile, right? So like, um, I mean, only speculators kind of like, a, like, a, like a traders and the, like some, 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 or people call it wealth, they, they like that. So a lot of normal people, they don't like that. They want some stability, right? So for example, uh, the, the, another problem that a DeFi, pro, DeFi project try, trying to solve is actually a stability. Uh, so, so in, in order to AMM, so AMM is a, a exchange protocols, right? So there are any other kind of different protocols, for example, landings, synthetic assets, all these kind of different stuff. So depend on the purpose. Also, I think uh, the great thing about DeFi protocol is that the is, is the interoperability. So that uh, so uh, this is really different from the traditional finance thinking. I think a lot. I think uh, people find DeFi great is that. Uh, uh, you are actually, you don't have to, so for example, so that's why a lot of people uh, actually think that DeFi could challenge the traditional finance is that uh, in the sense that uh, you don't have to have a, like one single entity, the big banks cover everything and the every, so it's kind of like a Lego, right? So like uh, uh, the, the, the entire stack is provided by different like a small players. And also in each layer kind of is interchangeable. And let's say if some players like they are doing really bad or, or the, their, their, their product is not good, then it will be exchanged, eventually be outcompeted by others. So, uh, so, 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 that's a, so, so that's a DeFi, yeah. At, at least my understanding, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, that's great to have that view. 
Um, yeah, and uh, yes, exactly. Thanks, Shimo, for that answer. Um, and I, I just wanted to go back to the smart contract for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so with the with the automatic um, automatic money maker, which is a, a, a smart contract, um, that was an interesting idea. Um, and and I, I I don't work a lot in the DeFi space, so like that was something really I didn't know before. So that's super to learn about that. But one question that came into my mind was, um, so you said that the smart contract uh, computes the delta between X and Y. And then like what I was wondering is that what happens to the delta? So like, does the smart count contract, is it like a DAO where the smart contract dis distributes it out to the- oh, um, so, so, Sorry, my, my bad. I think I didn't explain super clear. I, I think oh, uh, okay. uh, the, the delta is like, a, let's say the, the AMM has a, at a current price point, let's say X, X, X zero, Y zero, right? Okay. Then you want to exchange, you want to, uh, uh, you want to put a X, you want to put a K like an X asset and get, get back some Y asset. Right, then yeah. You, mm -hmm. Then you submit this K to the smart contract and a smart contract will automatically, according to the curve and compute how many like a Y you get. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. But there's going to be a, you know, like any foreign exchange, right? There might be some like, um, you know, based on this delta. So you would. So the idea is that that uh, you would get back, um, you know, the converted whatever you're converting from BTC to ether, as you were in your example, and then whatever can't be converted just comes back to you as um, unconverted BTC or does it get retained by the smart contract as a fee or how does this like what I'm trying to get at is like how, where how does the how does the um, money flow basically and does the smart contract actually earn for the um, you know those who are the owner you, of the smart you. contract that, that's what I'm trying to get at like you know, like who is benefiting and how? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that's that's a great question. Sorry, I'm, this is a little simply simply uh, simple view. So 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 first, uh, you have so when you create a pool, you have to post X asset and Y asset. So the first question you might ask like, who is going to pull the asset? And the, the asset people call is the liquidity provider, basically. Okay. So uh, so, so anyone could uh, put your, uh, for example, you could uh, put your ether and uh, like uh, or like. Uh, uh, other ERC20 token in that. So that's that's called liquidity provider. And uh, why you want to provide liquidity are you so basically, uh, when, when you do the exchange, there is a change fee. So there is a charging fees, right? So then this charging fees will be, um, these fees will get paid as the interest of the liquidity providers. I see, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the li liquidity provider could be like a traditional player in the financial system, right? It could be like a bank. Right, so, so for in the crypto system is more like- um, uh, like uh, No, just anyone who have a, any crypto asset, you can oh, be the liquidity okay. provider. Okay, right, got it's it. It's like a kind of like a, uh, in some sense, de uh, democratize the, the liquidity provider. Right. Okay, so you don't yeah. have, yeah, like you don't have to be a big bank to be the liquidity provider. Okay. Okay. And then yeah. like, let's say I, I have a lot of, um, a lot of, um, you know, liquidity. And mm -hmm. so then the, what your platform will allow me to do is to create a smart contract using this, you know, kind of template, this um, AMN uh, template. And then I can basically put myself forward as a liquidity provider to, to do, to make the market. Is that the idea? So, so there are two parties: there are liquidity providers and traders. And once the liquidity is provided, the, the traders can uh, now in, like they can trade the different kind of tokens. Uh, right, right. So um, I guess then the question is like, you know, I'm a trader. Mm -hmm. um, there could be any number of liquidity providers on the network. How do I choose the liquidity provider that I want to use? Um, Your market. So in some sense, for, from a security point of view, it doesn't matter. You may want to choose a better with some better exchange rate. And uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, I think right now, I think uh, uh, for, from, from a trader point of view, it's really like, uh, uh, because I mean, they're going to be arbitrage anyway. So that's uh, probably, if you just trade, it probably doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's, I think uh, uh, right now, I think uh, more the, uh, so people choose some trustworthy brand and they choose some like, uh, uh, choose some trustworthy brand and choose some like a 
uh, liquidity choose some like AMM has a good liquidity, have a large kind of like a liquidity pool so that, uh, right. Uh, yeah. Also, there are many technical details. For example, how do you prevent from running, and yeah. how do you um like uh. Uh, the, the curve is actually not x y times k is actually more complicated the, the, the root word curve is actually more complicated right right yeah like i'm just wondering if um you know like the the liquidity provider becomes like a central intermediary where like if you if there's two traders you know on the side of a transaction oh, oh sorry sorry like uh, i i think i didn't explain uh, very clearly the liquidity provide the liquidity is a pool Right. Yeah. So you don't, okay. so you don't monopoly, monopoly the liquidity provider. Oh, okay. okay. So, so anyone can, so, so you, let's say even you have one ESR, you could do, be the liquidity provider. Right. So, so the, 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 tra the, the trading pairs is not created by single people. It actually created, actually in some sense created, that's a decentralized exchange itself, right? So for example, uh, there's a popular decentralized exchange called um, Uniswap, right? This is the biggest mm -hmm. one so far. And they, they, they are basically a, a bunch of, uh, so, so, so it's, it's actually insane, right? So think of, uh, if you want to create change in the uh, traditional world, uh, you, like, you, may, you need help very, a lot of people. And the Uniswap is created by seven people. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, they are the, their trading volume is insane right, right, right now. And they, they still have like less than 10 people, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, yeah. so, 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 so in the sense that the smart contract itself is a de decentralizing change. And yeah. once they write this smart contract, like anyone can, uh, sort of uh, be the liquidity providers and traders. Of course, they need to build some like a front end and wallets, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah. yeah. So from a technical standpoint, who who is who owns the library, the smart contract library? Who owns the smart contract? Is it the? So, so I think the best way is to govern by DAO. So mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, in practice. There are some people just write the. I think the smart contract is open source, so that uh, everyone should be able to audit that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. And, and then um, well, what, one other question I had was like, a, you know, going back, to, like thinking about the security. So I'm, you know, so many elements go into the security of a blockchain solution, not just the core blockchain platform, but the smart contract libraries, the web, um, inter, you know, interfaces and so on for all the connections. And I'm just wondering like, is there like, would the, um, ZK Snarks approach that you've identified, like would that protect the interacting parties from let, let's say like IP capture and being able to use some of the forensic techniques that are used to trace back to, um, you know, to, 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 to interacting parties, you know, like if we want to replicate cash, we're going to have to make sure, I suppose, that we could prevent that, you know, those kind of attacks. Um, that's a good question. So. I think the there is a subtle answer here, right? So uh, first, in principle, you could, but in practice, there are many caveats. So, for example, um, like uh, the, so, so it's really like how can you prevent information leakage from more like a higher level point of view? And uh, so, you basically need a a practical answer is that you need a lot of you basically need a, a certain amount of a trading volumes to, uh, to, to, so basically it's a pool, uh, you, you do the anonymized transactions, but if the, if you have the, the transaction is too less, the trading volume is, is not that, that many, then like, uh, then, then it's very, very hard. Even, even for Zcash, um, there are some papers like attacks on Zcash. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a common, it's a definitely, a common problem. Um, yeah, but I, I don't think that's a too big a problem because it's actually, I mean, so so someone have a very um, so someone have a very uh, so I think uh, once I learned over these years that we shouldn't have a kind of like a absolute point of view of security. The security is like how much cost the attacker yeah. can have, and right. it, after 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 like uh, applying all these like a uh, advanced crypto techniques. The, the 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 cost of attack is definitely getting like way more difficult. Like for the, sure. Yeah, the cost of attack getting way more higher. So for yeah. example, for the for the pseudo not pseudo not pseudo anonymity, right? So the Bitcoin transactions. Mm -hmm. I mean, partially thanks to the machine learning 
be, be become so 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 much better nowadays. The link analysis is, is very very simple actually. So, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so you you just yeah. link the link you just uh, kind of like a. Uh, the transaction you construct a graph you do some like a graph and analytics and uh, that's um, i mean that's becoming i uh, maybe become even more easier in the future i don't know because i think machine learning is keep going yeah. yeah 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 i mean that is what you know we're kind of up against in 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 terms of data leakage as you say but you know by the same token i also agree with you that you know that it make the attack more costly um, to, by putting these protections around for any attacker and um, you know defense in depth as they say, and um, like also you can't solve for every problem all at once, but you know combined solutions will emerge and then they can be incorporated. So you have to make steps towards improving privacy. You can't really necessarily you know come out with the perfect. Um, you know, solution to every dimension of privacy protection. Agreed, so, agreed, agreed. Um, but we reached with that, with that, we reached the top of our hour and uh, it went by so fast. Um, so much more that we could, we could uh, share. And, um, but we really appreciate your taking the time to share this really interesting project and your perspective and thoughts is so uh, educational. So please come back and speak to us again. And we look forward to an ongoing exchange. And David, I just wanted to ask you if there's any last things you'd like to say to Shumo before we call it a wrap. <laughs> uh, thank you for the presentation, uh, um, Dr. Chu. Okay, uh, and then uh, yes, we also have our um, summer school and we have our symposium in this summer. And then um, please, then if you are interested to come back and then to share the progress of your awesome project. Thank you. Great, great to join. Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. Also, you should uh, come come here like uh, to UCSB sometime <laughs> to virtually speak uh, to talk about the, what, what you, you guys are doing. Uh, yeah, also like uh, I just, just want to put a little bit of advertisement. We are recruiting like a uh, protocol engineers. If you're familiar with a uh, kind of like distributed <laughs> system and the Rust, uh, just, just, just send me an email. Right? We're, we're happy to talk. Yeah. Fantastic. And, yeah. And then uh, another thing I just want to mention um, before we uh, we finish. Uh, recently, then, uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm working on some exchange based on the uh, payment channel technology. And then so we can support the uh, high frequency trading with the uh, payment channel stuff. And also, we suffer from the liquidity problem with the uh, payment channel. Then that we can uh, have some discussion. Yeah, yeah. Let's have some uh, offline talk about that. Yeah. Let's, let's keep the, this this great discussion great. going. Great, thank you so much, thank Shumo. You. Again, thank you, David, for bringing Shumo to us, and thanks everybody for participating. Yeah. Also, thank thanks for, thanks a lot for the great question. They are really great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we're 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 all great. And on that note, <laughs> have a great day, everybody. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.